here. Mm -hmm. All right, pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. All right, and it is 6.37. We'll call the HRC meeting to order. So I think that we should probably do uh, introductions here. So my name is Philip Avila. I am the co-chair of the Human Rights Commission. I will pass it over to Liz Haygood. Good evening, my name is Liz Haygood and today, no, wait a minute. I think September starts my second, my second term on the Human Rights Commission. Ronnie, would you like to go next? Yes, hi, I'm Ronnie Parker. I've been on the commission for I've forgotten now a few months, but it feels like family to me. Um, That's awesome. Uh, Tyler? Hey, I'm Tyler. I'm a senior at Amherst College, and I've been on the commission since sometime in the fall or early winter. Uh, yeah. Yep. And then I'll go to our staff liaisons and then our new members. So, Pamela? Hi, I'm Pamela Nolan Young. I'm the director of the Office of Disability of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, and our office supports four <laughs> commissions: the Human Rights Commission, the Disability um, Access Advisory Commission, the CSSJC, and the African Heritage Reparations Assembly. And Jennifer. Hi, everyone. I'm Jennifer Moist, and I'm the Assistant Director to the Office of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and I've been with the town for about 10 years, so, and the commission for about five or six. And Deborah? I am Deborah Kolodny, and I just want to say, Pamela and Jennifer, I hope you get to come in late on the days that you have to serve at night. And I'm not yet, I haven't gotten my letter yet, so I'm not yet on the commission. Got it, yes. yes. And then Jacinda, am I saying that right? Correct me if I am wrong, please. It's Jacinta. Jacinta, so, yeah. got it. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm Jacinta Smith. I go to Amherst College. I'm a rising junior, and I use she, her pronouns. Perfect. Thank you, everybody, for coming. So as you heard, um, Deborah and Jacinta are our potential newest members are waiting on their letter and then to get sworn in just like we all did but um we will have that happening i would imagine in the next by the next time we meet in july so let me just pull up the agenda because i am running a little bit crazy today because i just came from an event from the survival center so first on the agenda is we have welcoming remarks announcements does anybody have any announcements Not seen any announcements, and we'll go to agenda reviews. So next, we'll have public comment, and then action and discussion items. We'll have a uh, discussion around the nomination of co-chairs, update on events that we've had, update on the Juneteenth event, the, uh, uh, the Amherst Affordable Housing event, update on bylaws, um, and then in the packet, there is a state of the human rights that we will go over and then the reading for Frederick Douglass, then we'll open back up after that for public comment and member reports. So right now we will open it up to public comment. And I don't know that, oops, let me get everybody go. I don't know that anybody is in the audience. Am I correct with that? All right, so not seeing anybody in the audience, so there will not be any public comment tonight. So we'll roll right on into the, action items. So nomination of co-chairs, I think um, just again, reiterating that I will be leaving in July. And so my last meeting with you all will be in July. And so discussions around that um, nomination, I think can come at our July meeting. So just putting it in a plug there, anybody that is interested in being a co-chair, um, 
I just spoke to Ben. He is not able to join us tonight, but he will be at the July meeting. And so he is still looking to be uh, as a co-chair, but my position obviously will be up. So just having that out there. Update on events, Youth Hero Awards. That was an amazing event. Does anybody that else was there that would like to talk? I love hearing my own voice, but I kind of want to leave some space for others. Go ahead, Ronnie. Um, I was there and um, it was one of the most, it was the most amazing event I've been to in Amherst. And for the new people, you should know that I'm new. I haven't lived in Amherst very long, year and a half. I have been to a number of events, however, and I've never seen a group like this. Multi-generational, multi-ethnic, happy people, kicking around the ball, playing games, riding on the swing, uh, sitting around and talking, um, white people, black people. Um, I was by the grill, uh, grilling more hamburgers than I think I've ever grilled in my entire life. Uh, participating in that whole culture of the grillers and all this banter that was going on there. It was just, I mean, it was the model of community building. I was so, so pleased to be part of that. And it just, it made me feel proud and happy to be um, in Amherst, to be a resident of Amherst. It was really an amazing thing. And how you know, Jennifer and Pamela and Philip put all that together. I just have no idea. I mean, it was a big, big thing. And it was so, so joyful. I mean, I live in downtown Amherst and I love when the students come in because it feels like a diverse place to me. But when the students are gone, it's a very white part of town. Um, so just to see all of that, it was really nice. I'm sorry to have gone on so long, but it was, I thought, wonderful, a wonderful event. Um, so thank you all for the people who did all the work for that, which I wish I had helped with more with, but I think my schedule will improve out this summer. Yeah, thank you for sharing and no worries about going on. That's kind of what these updates are about. Anybody else that went to the event would like to speak? Deborah? Really quickly, I know, Jennifer, that the events are your portfolio. And I, now that I've been to two, I just want to give kudos and bow down to your um, capacity and leadership. Um, great job. And I also want to say, if you haven't done this yet, it's really wonderful to serve. So I loved being on the food line with Pamela and just giving people food and making seeing how happy they were. It was beautiful to be of service. Um, so I thank you for your praises, but it's never just a singular effort. So, um, you know, there were the, the guys from the old versus young. Uh, Edgar did a great job organizing that basketball portion of it. Like that was really his thing in keeping the tournament structured. And um, yeah, and I think that we all, everybody put in their effort and put in some effort towards the event. So that's what happens. You get a great thing when everybody collaborates and works together. Um, it's much better than working, you know, in silos, right? So, um, and I'm hoping that, you know, we can have some more participation because the events are going to get bigger. I think for the Basketball Youth Hero Awards, I don't know. It seems like it's a good thing to keep it with Race Amity Day if we can, but I know that Race Amity Day always falls on the 11th. So I don't know that they will celebrate it on a weekend or not, um, just because if we hadn't done it together, we would have been in competition and neither of the groups necessarily collect a lot of folks. So, but when you combine them all, you get, as Ronnie said, the cross generational cross um, ethnic backgrounds. And so that's really what those events are, are for. So we'll have to reach out um, to the folks from Race Amity Day and see. Scheduling is always hard because we're doing it in between graduation and prom and senior night. And so it just gets a little bit hard to schedule it at a convenient time. And anything after, I think, the 15th runs the risk of the students 
the high school kids that we're trying to give the awards to leaving. But at the basketball tournament, it was so late that there were so many kids who were college that came back home who were able to participate. So that was really nice too. So I'm looking forward to scheduling those events with you guys moving forward. So Jennifer, I just need to say that I, though I appreciate the collaboration part of it, um, those things go through you. So while you are accepting some responsibility and acknowledging other people's part, I also wanna say that if it doesn't come through you, and this is not just this year, um, some folks don't know, but um, as a commissioner and as someone who has watched you grow up from the age of what, two, <laughs> um, I see your worth and um, I acknowledge your worth and it's sometimes hard to acknowledge in ourselves our own worth. So I'm acknowledging it for you in open air space and it recorded. Thank you very much. I thank like you, that. Liz. <laughs> yes, thank you, Liz. That's very nice. And yes, Jen, amazing, amazing work. It's, it's always a fun one, definitely. Um, yeah, I think that my takes from it is that if we could keep the tournament happening like let's do that because that we started that last year and that seems to have drawn even a bigger crowd and then the combination of race amity day i think if we can have that i think in a fortunate way it allows for some of our city officials to come since there is a proclamation be made and i mean it is what it is if that's how they come then that's how they come and that's a great way to speak to community and get people involved in that way so i think that to your point though we'd have to reach out to ash and see if they're up to doing it on a weekend rather than the actual day so well then i guess it's a, a you all not a not a me thing <laughs> but yeah so that is my main takes away and i, I just really want to say that we had over, correct me if I'm wrong, Jennifer, 50 youth be recognized in some type of way. So that is an amazing thing in itself. Um, and yeah, it, it was a really, really great event and looking forward to hearing more about those types of events because I will be following you all on Facebook and different social media. So that's, that's gonna be good. Does anybody else have anything to add in about Youth Hero Awards? I'm just gonna, we do need to just give it up to those almost 50 youth because that was amazing. And people nominated groups of people and it was the first time that groups of people were nominated so many times. So the kids from the graphic were nominated 28 times. Um, the ch the kids from Posh were nominated like eight or nine times. Nine. And then we had individuals who were nominated multiple times by different people. So it also just shows that there are these rising stars in the community. And so hopefully, you know, the, the Youth Hero Awards can help encourage more kids to be involved in that way. Yeah. And hopefully, who knows, maybe once one youth that was attending the event might be joining the HRC pretty soon. See what happens. It's always a great thing to have high schoolers and younger. All right. If no one has anything else on that, uh, the next update is Juneteenth. Anybody like to speak on Juneteenth that was there? So, uh, so Philip, may I maybe uh, skip ahead to the bylaws since I'm going to have to jump off the call? Um, oh, yeah. So go back to. Yep, we could go back to Juneteenth. That's fine. Yep, let's okay. do an update on bylaws. So, um, uh, the bylaws have gone through their final revisions, and um, and I have passed them off to the attorneys. So we'll just waiting to hear um, back from them. I know that Paul had indicated to me that he was hoping to have um, the town council vote on a number of different bylaw changes in July. So it, um, it's likely that we'll get some feedback from him and um, the attorneys. Um, but I don't know if that's been, if they've established a meeting date. 
for discussion, but that's where we are. So okay, yeah, that's really good. And just for our newer folks, um, so we were looking at our bylaws at the beginning of this year and have been kind of working on them. Ronnie, um, myself, and Tyler have kind of been spearheading that project and rewriting and working them with along with Pamela and Jennifer. So we are at the stage to where they have gone to the attorney. So that's kind of where we are. And um, that's, that is great, great news to hear. And hopefully maybe there'll be even better news come July, but I can't imagine that there won't be a revision here or there <laughs> knowing, knowing attorneys. <laughs> All, right, All right. So, so your co-host and I am going to jump off and go to my class. So. Yep, thank you, Pamela. Sure. Bye, Pamela. Bye. All right, so Juneteenth, uh, I will take it from there. Uh, we definitely had a huge event there as well. That was just this Sunday. Um, Jennifer, how many people would you say in and out the entire day? Yeah, I think we hit pretty close to 300 in and out. Okay. Yeah. It was a little bit different than in years before last year. It seemed like we had like 300, 350 people all in one shot and then they kind of like dispersed. But it seems like people, there was a steady flow of people. I could see them rushing from North Pleasant Street to, to get over to see what was going on. So it was pretty good. I, you know, our food vendors ran out of food other than the food trucks because they can just carry most. But I know Penny ran out by like 4 30 so and cake free cakery ran out by about four o'clock too so you know it's a beautiful thing when we can get the business community here particularly the black business community and you know have them sell their items and so the craft vendors did really well and it was just an all in all good day yeah, it was it was a really well attended day. Uh, we had our co-chair Ben um, DJing that, and it was a pretty cool one. Um, our town council came out as well, and yeah, it was it was a really great event, another great community event. And I want to say that with these two events that have happened, like a ton of people have come up to me or have texted me or emailed me to be like, thank you so much for holding this. Like, this is amazing. This is so great. Like, I'm so glad to see the HRC is doing this. And then they've kind of have said, oh, you know, that's the first time I've met my town councilor. Oh, that's the first time like I've seen this or I've seen that. And so I think that in a way, in our mission and our charge of bringing community together and educating people, we are really hitting that this year. And I just want to say, Thank you so much for everybody's part in it because it is quite a group effort. I think that it, it'd be a little crazy if one person had to do this all themselves. And Jennifer, yes, I know you don't want to hear it again, but thank you for being that leader. You you really are great at that. And I really do appreciate it. I, and you know, I don't mind being your right hand person there. So that is something that I really do appreciate about you. You're going to make me cry because you're leaving. And I just like, I just, I'm just like, ugh, what? We're not, so, we're not mentioning that in my presence. I'm sorry. I know. Like we, nobody really wants to acknowledge that that's something that's really going to happen. We'll all be in August meeting like, ah, uh, where's Philip? Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. Um, go ahead, Deborah. Yeah, as, as a newbie to the circle, I just want to say that um, the Youth Hero Awards event um, felt very beautiful and insidery, like the people who are participating, they were on teams that was like, yeah, it was oriented towards them, right? But the Juneteenth celebration felt like such a, uh, an outreach activity and um, so many people came and I, for one, love the opportunity to support local vendors um, and black owned businesses and hear amazing music. And I, I got these earrings there. And nice. <laughs> um, yeah, it was really a remarkable event. And now that I've been, uh, I promise you, I'm gonna get as many people as possible next year to come who aren't there. Yes, that'd be great. Def definitely. I think one thing too that uh, we tried to lift up, but I don't know that it got off the ground other than the tablets in um, the what is it, the senior center? Is that where they are? The bank center? But if 
next year if you all are thinking about like having some type of timeline or some type of something to have it I think that would be really great to have we try to get that happening this year and I don't think that we got it off the ground but yeah I mean that's that's what these events are about and that's what I really I think like about them in my time as co-chair is kind of having a space to be like yes let's celebrate culture let's celebrate diversity let's also also educate when we can right like how many people don't know what Juneteenth is I had many conversations that day of like what are we celebrating why are we on this town common and then I would explain oh this is the reason why oh I didn't know that and yeah well look forward to it it's gonna happen every year from here on out like on the town and so it's it's really great to have that anybody else on Juneteenth All right, Liz, I'm gonna look to you for this one. Affordable housing listening session update. Just happened yesterday. So that happened last night at the Bangs Community Center. Um, around 6.15, we were standing there saying, oh my God, where are the people? And then all of a sudden we had like 40 something people in the room in like two minutes. Um, we had some spirited, hello, spirited conversations um, about affordable housing or attainable housing. Um, there are notes being taken that are being um, typed up and presented to us. We are going to be meeting next Wednesday, um, some in Zoom and some in person um, to try to gather the notes, figure out our common themes, and then um, our plan of, I don't wanna say attack because that's not a good word, but our plan going forward to make a presentation to the town council to do something about the fact that we have too many people that are having issues with housing in the town of Amherst. And for those of you who are new and don't know what our charge was, um, there are members of the CSSJC the Human Rights Commission, which was Philip and myself, along with Jennifer and supported by Nate um, at the at, from Town Hall, and also members of the Board of Health and members of the Affordable Housing Trust. And we started meeting once a week and talking about some of the issues around housing in Amherst, whether it was the taxes are too high, um, not enough coal, um, coal, um, What's the word? I don't want to say co-housing, but affordable housing, um, people not being able to um, afford to live in this town, people that work in this town that live in other towns because the rent and or the access and or the taxes are lower. And we're trying to put a name and a face on all of that and try to do something about that um, so that the people that want to be in this town, people that own businesses in this town can also live in this town comfortably and affordably. So that's the gist of it. And if anybody else would like to, um, I know if we can do that, it's not supposed to have more than three people or more than two people on a subcommittee, I think. But anyway, um, we will be reporting to you all every time we meet for this group, um, any of the steps that have been moved forward or any reports that we have um, here on out. Yeah, I just echo what Elizabeth says. It was a really great event, really well attended event. And we had 40 people in the room. We also had 20, over 20 something responses. So in essence, we've heard from 60 members of our community on affordable housing. And so that in itself is really good. I was talking to a couple of people on the affordable housing trust and they said that this is the most they've heard from individuals on um, from about affordable housing so i think that this event was a really well attended event and hopefully does a lot to bring awareness of um the night of the event we had questions of like what does affordable housing look like to you uh how are ways that we can improve it in town and what other like options i forget what the exact question was, but what other options are there um, in affordable housing talking? And as well as in the groups from talking to the different facilitators of the night, like my group um, had a lot of unhoused people in uh, my group. Another group that was there had a, a 
large graduate student um, population there. And then another group had some town people as well in their group, like town officials and um, other governance. And then another group just had regular old, just, you know, like residents, just people that just had moved in or just got there. So I think on the diverse of the diversity of these attendees and voices, I feel like we are hearing from a lot of groups and I hope, my hope is that town council will hear from us and will really use this as, you know, like, hey, this is what pe actual residents are saying. These are what people that want to live in Amherst are saying, because that is one of the things that we um, had in that listening session was that whether you're a homeowner, a renter, stay occasionally, would like to live in Amherst, work in Amherst, any type of way that you would like to basically share space in Amherst, we want to hear from you. And I think that really opened up the door to a lot of um, fruitful conversations. We have any questions from any members? Dradrani? I think that's, I, I felt really sorry to have missed that. Uh, I'm out of town, just so you know. Um, I'm wondering if in this discussion, there was any discussion of the other thing that's going on in town about this new um, proposed bylaw to build um, duplexes and triplexes and so on. Did, did that come up in the discussion? I'm just curious. And Liz Absolutely. Was, go ahead, Liz. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Um, there was a lot of discussion. I actually had um, two town council members and other folks from other entities around housing in my group. And um, I had to try to keep people on track <laughs> because some people veered off um, and there was some banter going back and forth at some point that I had to kind of shut down um, because I wanted people to be able to be heard without um, backlash. I don't know if that was a good word, but there was some challenging moments in my group. Uh, from people who had differences of opinions about things. And so, yes, that was brought up. Tiny houses was brought up. Co-ops were brought up. Um, shared, shared communities was brought up. Um, um, duplexes and triplexes where the owner had to live in one of the units was brought up. And um, rezoning for that to happen was brought up. And all of that was brought up, yes. Yeah, and I, I will say that um, to your point, Ronnie, one of the co-sponsors of that measure and bylaw was in attendance of that meeting. Oh, so goodness. so it was <laughs> definitely a, a conversation, right, of hear from your residents of what actually residents think of this new bylaw and see see what happens from it. So again, it's, it's fruitful conversation because I feel like these measures get made at town council, but not hearing from people. So having... Right a shared space to kind of, as Liz says, kind of duke it out and have opinions and go back and forth. It's, it's, it's beneficial in a way that if you're mindful of each other and respectful of each other, you can have that conversation to really move legislation forward in a positive way that impacts residents. Well, I also bring it up because I think that if we want to hear from residents, there needs to be a space, safe space to say what their experience is. Right. with their living situations and what issues they're facing. It's sort of difficult when you've got some of the strong voices, particularly associated with this particular bylaw um, present as equal partners. Right. That's, that's like, one of the reasons why we offered folks to be able to do written submissions. And uh, we made it clear at the beginning that there was uh, every comment was anonymous. We did not um, want anybody's names right, attached to anything right. that was said. Um, we wanted people to feel free to speak freely and um, let their voices be heard. Mm -hmm. um, and the three questions were, what does affordable housing mean to you? How can we approve housing options in Amherst? And what should we consider in developing potential solutions to housing challenges in Amherst? Those were three guiding questions, however, however, people had other opinions that were also offered while we were having our discussions. 
I think this is a really great process. How do we get, how does the public get access to what was discussed? I know you said it was being written up for your discussion. All right, so we are looking to write a full report. Um, everybody that was facilitating that night took notes. And so we're gonna have a document go around to write it up and then we'll have a final document that will have the summarizations of it. And as Liz said, there will be no like, oh, this person said that, or this population said that. It's rather more like our town residents have stated these main themes in affordable housing and what it is. And so I think that, that it's gonna be in, in a public way because it's going to town council. So definitely before it goes to town council, the committees and commissions will see it and then we'll send it off to town council. Right. Anybody else have any other questions? No? All right. We did the update on the bylaw review. So next is the state of human rights. So the commission for our newer members, um, another thing on top of the bylaws and all the events that we are doing, another thing that we um, wanted to do this year was do a state of human rights. It is it is also in our charge to give what the human rights commission would perceive the town state of human rights is. And so it is going to the town manager and to the town council. So I started a draft. I worked on a draft with um, Ronnie, Pamela and Ben as well and Jen also. And so we kind of written it and now it's going to be put out if we get a approval vote. So Jen, if you don't mind pulling that up, it was in tonight's packet meeting. Sure. Um, Tyler was also in that group. Oh, Tyler, yes. And while you're pulling it up, I just have to say every time I read that we have no authority, it, it makes my teeth hurt itch um it i know that we don't have authority we can just report and recommend and suggest but um on some of the issues that come up for folks they don't understand that they want us to do something about it and when we say we did do something about it we read the report we reviewed it we sent it off to the necessary folks we gave advocacy and um suggestions of, of for follow-up and sometimes that's great and sometimes it seems like it's just not enough. No, that's, that's a fair point. I think that that is something that has come out this year is the like realistic procedures of the HRC, right? And expectations of it. And that was a conversation that I was having with Pamela is that I think that we need to set clear expectations of when you make a complaint, kind of what's going to happen. Because I think the public perceives something else should happen. And to your point, Liz, we, we are tied up in, in a way that we can't do everything that people would want us to do. Um, can I just ask, can you guys see the bylaws or the... the... Yes. Yeah. This is not the... This document. is not it. No, it's this is something else. I took that from what uh, Philip gave me. Yes, I thought. Hold on. That's what's um, in your packet. Yeah, uh, it's in the packet. We're not doing the bylaws right now. We're doing the human rights review, I thought. Yeah. I thought it was the, the report, the statement of right, human the rights. State of human rights. The state you have of it, rights. You have it in the, the things package. that we have dealt with last year. Yeah, I didn't check the package. But, you know, in terms of the authority, one of the things that we can do is call for this. Uh, I don't know what the words were, reconciliation meeting or whatever it is. It's like a facilitative thing. It's very similar what, to what the Zoning Board of Appeals does. And it might help us to talk to Steve Judge because they actually have used it to help people, help neighbors deal with disagreements and come up with solutions. And I know that a housing conflict isn't the same as a human rights complaint. But we need to take, I think there's a lot of potential for influence in that area, even though there's no authority as such. Um, 
we'll have to talk with Pamela about it at some point about what our capacities are to actually facilitate that kind of thing. Maybe Deb has some of that experience um, or skill, which I know I don't. Can I just, I'm going to pull it up again quickly. I think the, both of those things are combined into one document somehow. But um, I would say that often there isn't a lot, there's, I wouldn't underestimate that we don't have the authority to, right? Like that doesn't feel good. But what I will say is in the past, I've known, first, we most definitely validate somebody. What, and we do that in a way that's very bipartisan, I think is the word to use, like, or non, uh, I think guess the other term would be Switzerland, right? Like just very neutrally, right? Like we validate the person's ex what they've experienced, what they feel that they've experienced. But often I know that there's been times when people have come come in and said, you know, I felt like I was discriminated against A, B, or C. And when we follow up with A, B, and C, A, B, and C make the changes that are needed to prevent it from happening be again. So whether or not that we sit down and have this long negotiation or not, like the overall thing is that what needed to happen was like, say, a uh, no trespassing, no trespassing sign needed to be put somewhere, but it wasn't there before. And so, if it's not there, then people should feel like they can go walk wherever. But then it was put there, right? And so that is showing us that while we might not be able to do like this thorough investigation that some people might anticipate, that we do have some kind of weight by name of being the town, and that people really take that serious around here. So. I just wanted to add that because I understand the notion of the word doesn't have any authority sounds like a lot of things, but there is some merit to it coming from the town and the Human Rights Commission and the HR director. Deborah, go ahead, you're gonna say something? Oh, I'm delighted to hear that there's been an impact. So that's fantastic. And maybe there's a way to phrase that. Um, to say that um, one of the roles is to uh, intervene, problem solve and intervene and facilitate action um, without recourse to official kind of, I don't know, or legal, whatever channels. Um, in answer to what Ronnie said, I am a professional in conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. I've done restorative justice work. I've also done mediation and arbitration, but I'm also really sensitive to the fact that I am a white person and this is a majority BIPOC commission as it should be. And so um, I have that skill set, but I'd feel uncomfortable being the person who is doing it if that's, if the commission wanted a person to do it. Right, so the way that it's currently set up right now is our um, DAI office would be doing it. So Pamela and Jennifer are the ones kind of spearheading um, complaints that come through. So it's it's more, I think Ronnie was more saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ronnie, because I do not want to speak for you, that it's, it's nice to have you on the commission to then give those legal things that I myself am not an expert on. So can I just say one more thing? Yep. The HR second paragraph, the HRC acknowledges the town of Amherst for the adopted resolution affirming its commitment to end structural racism and achieve racial equity for black residents. Should that not say BIPOC residents or no? I'm asking. Uh, it's, it might be a direct quote from when the town council made it. And I believe that was in due to George Floyd. So is it, it, is it in quotations? Can I try to quote that? No. It's no. just, it's the second paragraph, first two lines. But it's it's in, do you see me hovering over it? Yes. yes. It's oh, in, it in quotation. quotation. Right. All right. I, I mean, we can add in, in our own, like put parentheses out of the quotations and BIPOC community. I mean, that's something that we can definitely add in for that if that's what people would like to do. I, I was just... The reason why I highlighted that was that it gives kind of the, you said this, right? You made a, 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 a public statement that you're trying to do something. Let's hold you to what you're trying to do to, for the town council. Ronnie, did you have something to say? Yeah, I was just thinking that we should say what they said. 
They didn't say BIPOC, they said black. So that's what I would put in the quotes. And I don't think we need to give them, give, I, we would like to see it be broader, but if they didn't say that, then they didn't. That's sort of how I feel, I don't. Would people like to read it on their own or would they like someone to read it out loud? And I'm not nominating myself to read it out loud unless you guys want to sit here for an hour. Well, I've read it and that's the only two things that I that popped up for me. So unless you want me to read it. How are others feeling? I mean, I, I helped write it, so I, I, I'm good on my end. <laughs> All right. Yep, if you could just keep scrolling, Jen. Are people ready for the next page? One thing that I do want to highlight there under um, We the Human Rights Have Celebrated, at the bottom end of it, I think that it was a great um, suggestion, and I can't remember if it was Ronnie or Pamela at this point, we've done so many different <laughs> revisions here, um, is that the dollar amount asking price for it was priced out from this year, from June or July of the start of 2022 to 2023 and so that was helped out by Jennifer and Pamela kind of just the cost of everything right like the cost of food the cost of the venue cost of different um performances that we had and so that 23,000 is honestly a realistic of if this town would like to continue these types of events and to not have just donations and especially not to have donations by our BIPOC community so that way our BIPOC community can make money that price tag is a realistic price tag of an investment that needs to be put into place. I believe, and Jennifer, correct me if I'm wrong, our budget is only 1500 for the entire year. The special activities account for the Human Rights Commission mm -hmm. is $1,500. So we work very hard to fill in the gaps everywhere. So way we under. work more way under than what the actual realistic price tag is. How do they expect us to continue to put on such events without um, shared expenses like um, the um, Youth Hero Awards was a shared expense. Um, last night's meeting was a shared expense. Actually, it came directly from the Housing Trust, actually. But how do they expect us to continue to put on these type of community events with $1,500 for one year. That makes no sense to me. No, right. that is true. But I will also say that because we are a municipality there, we have lots of red tape. So for instance, in theory, unless you have special legislation, we shouldn't be feeding large amounts of community members at like events, right? Because then then tax people are feeling like you're spending our money to feed people. Like there's this whole process of stuff that has to happen. And so I personally feel like one of the best things, and I know I brought this up before, and I'm going to try and when I come back from vacation to work with the League of Women Voters on it is, and if you guys don't mind, of course, um, is having a Friends of the Human Rights Commission because they can fundraise and they don't have the red tape, you know, um, that the town is bounded by because it's a it's a municipality so um it's another commissioner board but it's also at the same time is detached and i think it would be very beneficial and i think if we had a very um there's just so many more beneficial things if we had a divorce diverse group of individuals on that um trust then 
I wouldn't have to run after and find community members that might want to be involved to help me make sure that the proclamation is read or reads in an appropriate way, right? So there's lots of benefits to having, um, you know, a, a friends group for the HRC outside yeah. of just the money. And then not every, you know, it would alleviate a lot of um, the work that I do as far as goes with the events, right? Because then I could focus on some more of the um, other work that's happening here at the town. They, they do kind of consume me and they go year round, so. Yes, yes, and totally. And I, I mean, having that, having the funding, luckily um, Amherst College has been a great partner for some of these events. But again, to, to Liz's point, I think it does, I mean, it is what it is, right? Like, sure, some people might say, oh, I don't want my tax dollars paying for that. I pay taxes and I don't want my certain tax dollars to pay for certain things. But it, <laughs> at the end of the day, it is what it is to an event like this. It, it makes it to where we have a sense of community in town and that sense of community is so needed at the affordable housing um, conversation. I think that's one thing that a lot of people were saying is that like, oh, I just want to live somewhere where I know my neighbors. I want to live somewhere where um, I can feel safe sending my kid outside and knowing that I'm not like the only one watching after them 24 seven, like having those things is, is needed. It is, but, it, but it's not that people feel like they don't want their tax money to be spent. I just want to clarify that it's like state law that we can't do that. And so when we have food, it's because we've partnered with someone and another entity who can cover the cost of the foods because the town cannot. The do town that. can. That's it's actual state law or it's either you can create, you can have it go before special legislation to try and have it accommodated that way. But by the time doing all of that, I just assumed that uh, friends would be just as fast, if not faster. Totally. Oh, I mean, yes. I, thanks for clarifying and saying that. And I think that that is needed, but also like, right, not saying you, not saying this commission, saying our town council, like why also can our town council be like, oh, like, you know, we, we will run through that red for you all. Okay. Yeah, no, I mean, there's no argument, uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly, that's what I'm saying. The, the other thing for me, it's not just about feeding, it's about some of these folks giving up their time and their energy and their skills and things like that um, some of them who are uh, lower income, be, you know, some of them who are BIPOC and struggling, that we can't even offer them a little nugget for coming and sharing their talents with us. I mean, I look at Kwanzaa, I look at some of the other things that we put on um, and the work that Philip and Victor did around our Latinx explosion at Kendrick Park. And it was a wonderful event. And it would have been nice to be able to you know, do something for those folks that gave up their time. I look at um, um, Ahmed's group, you know, they're professional yeah. people. They get paid and they did it for us for free. Should they? Of course they should. They were born and raised here. They live here. You know, Ahmed still works at the schools and all of that stuff. But wouldn't it have been nice if we could have offered them some, uh, some kind of honorarium or something for their time and their energy? So, um, even without the food part, it's just, you know, we had some people, the drummers and at Kwanzaa and, you know, just uh, folks upon folks that did some good stuff. Um, so that's all. Yeah, no, I think that's totally it. Uh, Ronnie has left. I just want to make note of that. I'm not bringing this under quorum, so hopefully she comes back in. Um, Jen, if you don't mind pulling it up though, so then that way we can look at um, the second page. You're muted, Jen. <laughs> Again, it's only been like four years of Zoom meetings. Um, I think that I did have it up correctly and right. I just had scrolled down too far. Right, exactly. Yeah. Is that what I mean, happened? It, yeah. Can you see now? 
sense. Yes. Yep. So and then you if want you want me to go here. Yes. So this part of the um, statement is the re kind of like review mm -hmm. summary of the complaints that we've heard throughout this year from July to what will be essentially July at the time that it will be going to town manager and town council. Um, so if you want to take a look there. There was some against, I know, Amherst College, um, as well as uh, the July 5th incident. And Jennifer, if you scroll down, Amherst Businesses. Ooh, oh. That happened very fast. <laughs> that did happen so fast. So um, in this, um, we are trying to keep confidentiality as a priority. So that's why it just says two complaints were filed against Amherst College in both incidences. The complaints how were received for trespass, and then it kind of gives a little, a little bit of something, but not it doesn't name any people or any offices. So that way on both sides of the parties, then it is keeping that confidentiality. Anybody have any comments on that part of it? And so the last part then is just our sign off piece of it. And so then, Jennifer. Um, you know, is the only thing is Juliana's name's not on there? Juliana is not officially a member anymore. As well as our but when some some of these things were happening, she was. I can reach out to her. I, I just I just don't want to put her on without her permission. So I, well, I don't okay. mind reaching out to her and seeing if she would not mind that. But that is also why um Deborah and Jacinda, I did not put you on here because I you were not officially there on the membership of it. So that's why. But that's, I mean, it's not a bad plan. I will check to see if there's any red tape there, Liz. And if there's not, I can't imagine Juliana ejecting. So we'll see. Well, yeah, I just feel like all the things that were leading up to the, the those reports that came in, that she was a participant on the Human Rights Commission. She was able to um, speak about some of those things. And it just seems like, ugh. anyway. Yeah, just no, that's. That's a good thing to point out. Thank you for, for doing that. Uh, Jen, if you don't mind getting us back to see each other, thank you. All righty, so uh, if anybody would like to make, oh God, Ronnie. I just noticed a couple of small things where it says resources. They're like XXX. So those things need to, at the very bottom, those things either need to be filled in with websites or deleted. Right. So town manager's memo, whatever. So there's just a couple of small things at the very bottom. All right. I am uh, moving. And so as you can see, the banana box is behind me. My desk is completely packed up. So I have to type it out on my phone here for those notes. Otherwise, I would have had a pen on my desk. I looked around really quick for a pen and could not find one. So add in links there. Okay, anybody else have anything else? Other add in links, Juliana, reach out to her. All right, so officially there has to be some type of motion and a second and then discussion and voting. So if anybody would like to make a motion to approve this to go to town council. I move to approve. You're, you're just going to have to give a little bit more there for Jen. Approve. Approve the uh, human rights, state of human rights report of the past year for submission to the town council. I second, second with, with um, necessary corrections. Okay. All righty. So motion on the floor, and we have a second. Any discussion? Not seeing anybody discuss. 
All right, then we will move to vote and I'm just gonna call you out so you appear on my screen. Liz? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Ronnie? Yes. And I am a yes as well. Alrighty, so I will make those necessary corrections before that gets signed off into going to the town council. Uh, and then reason why I didn't call on the newly members is because you're not officially sworn in. So that's the reason why. I just want to add that in there. I'm not trying to actively exclude you out of anything. <laughs> that's not my goal. <laughs> All right. That is great then. Next up, we have the reading of Frederick Douglass' speech, What to the Slave is Fourth of July. So it was my understanding, and I don't know that I actually participated in this one last year, Jen, about that there is a speech that Frederick Douglass has written, and that it's kind of, do we do it like how we do Martin Luther's King speech, where we kind of pass it around and say little paragraphs? Yep, similar to the human rights day is uh, the human rights uh, declaration. So it's a community reading. It's usually well attended. Chris will sponsor some light snacks and refreshments. So we'll um, have some chairs out there for folks. And hopefully, um, I guess I should find a rain location just in case. Right. And out there is Town Common? Yes. Got it. And date, time? July 5th at 5 p.m. I'll be sending the flyer out shortly. I'm like all these little things I'm trying to do before. Right. <laughs> Liz, you were going to say something? Uh, uh, is it true that the town is doing their fireworks and celebration on the 1st, which is a Saturday, as opposed to the 4th, which is why? Um, I would say Stop that. Stop laughing at me, Jeff. <laughs> From from my understanding, it's uh, I think a lot of businesses are shorthanded, and the Fourth of July is a very popular event, and you know you have to have hold certain licenses or requirements or whatever, and so I think there's a shortage of fireworkers, and so that was the time that was available for us. I would really, yeah, I think we need to. Uh, whoever needs to publicize it, you may not be the person to speak with, Jen. But last year we missed it because it wasn't on July 4th. We were new to town and we had friends over and we were planning to go see the fireworks and we couldn't find the fireworks. Turned out it had already happened. Um, so, <laughs> you know, we didn't, um, I guess, if it's not when people expect it to be, it's sort of good to do some publicity. I certainly will share that with neighbors and others. Yes, I will. Um, I can send an email out to the folks in charge. Thanks. All right. Um, so going back to Fredless Doug, Douglas speech, July 5th, 530, Town Common. The look like people's availability meets that. I will be there for sure. I'm seeing Deborah, I'm seeing Ronnie, Liz. I'll be there. I just clicked off for a second just so I could put it in my calendar. And I got it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Tyler. I had to click back on. The um, July. 4th uh, reading? July 5th. So it's July about 5th. July 4th. It is happening on July 5th. <laughs> okay, so that and the fireworks are both July 5th. The fireworks is completely, no. that is your, if you would like to go to that, you can go to that. It is, the town is doing it. So that is the first is what I'm hearing. The event that the HRC is doing with Fre the Frederick Douglass reading is July 5th. And so um, he originally gave this speech on the 5th. That's why we do it on the 5th. Yeah. I just want to say my wife and I moved here July 1st, two years ago, and the Frederick Douglass reading was the first public event that we went to when we moved here. So that's awesome. I'm excited to go again. And what time is it going to be at? 5.30 on the town common, about by 5 o'clock, 5 p.m. Yeah. Uh, I can try to be there. Um, I 
should be able to be there. Okay. Yep. And Jacinda? Yep, I'm right outside, so right. <laughs> I can just pop out. <laughs> Sounds there's good. no right. heavy lift in this one so it's it's quite refreshing <laughs> it's actually quite light compared to the last two events so. it'll be a good a good way to get your feet wet in some of the events there <laughs> and it's yes. at 5 30 you said no five o'clock i said 5 30 and it's five o'clock don't listen to okay. me well, listen to Jen. <laughs> now i gotta go back in there and change that sorry <laughs> All right, and so with that, that is the end of our action and discussion items. Um, does anybody have anything, other topics that the chair did not anticipate 48 hours before we posted? So just to give you a little back for, I guess, whoever's trying to take over co-chair, we have to post 48 hours before our meeting. And so that's why under action and discussion items, anything that gets posted during that time frame. That's what we can discuss. Anything that gets brought up is okay, as long as it is then publicized and put in a way that the public can access. So that's why we have that little caveat of any other topics. So any other topics? Not seeing anybody. All right, I will go to uh, public comment, but I'm not sure there's anybody else in public here. Nope. So then the next one is HRC member reports. Any member reports that we have to give out? I will give one out for uh, the other committee that I am a part of is the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee, the CSSJC. They are currently having a quorum issue. And so if you know anybody that's looking to join CSSJC, if you want to spread the word around for them, that would be greatly appreciated on their end. Um, other than that, that is the most that I got from there. I, I think, Jen, did you go to the last meeting? No? All right, any other member reports there? Oh, I do have one more, actually. There was another. This one isn't an official one. This is a, there's a salsa in the park happening at um, Kendrick Park on Friday from, give me one second to pull up the flyer, from six to seven. And so it's this Friday, uh, salsa lessons happening. It's with our town's rec department. Um, Mass Cultural Council and Amherst Cultural Council. And the DJ there is the DJ that um, also helped out with our Latinx Heritage Month. So that's, I told him that I would say that. So I'm glad I remembered. <laughs> so if you like to learn some salsa moves, um, Kendrick Park this Friday night, if you can't make it, maybe letting a neighbor know, letting someone know, that'd be great. And other than that, if there's no any member reports, I don't have anything else. Liz? No. Okay, you unmuted, so I was like, I don't know if you're going to say something. I unmuted so I can move to a dismiss. <laughs> yes, yes. I am going to adjourn us here at 739. Thank you. Bye from Thank Kansas. Bye, Bye. Bye, everyone. Nice Take meeting care. you, Thank Jacinta. You being here. Nice meeting yeah, you as yeah, well. <laughs> Bye. Philip, you're not leaving. I don't care. It's yeah. not going to happen. If something's going to happen, it's going to keep you here. Oh yes, my it gosh. is. Yeah. And right. Let me tell you something. I am not going to be a co chair. I don't I, have the I, time. Yes, I, I really think Ronnie might do it. Or I was thinking about her. We'll, but we'll the see. Other thing she, is ben needs, if he's going to stay on, he needs to step up. I, I have not seen him. That's, I have I call, not seen I call, him. I call, I called him out on it on, on my text today. I said, hey, you coming today? Because I haven't seen you in a couple months. He said, I'm really sorry. I can't make this month. I promise I will make next month. I'm going to punch so. him in the throat, but I can't because that's <laughs> assault and I don't want to do that. I'm glad the right. meeting's over. Did you, did you like turn off the recording, by the way? <laughs> no, I didn't. Of course no, not. So that's being recorded. <laughs> that's being recorded here.